Watch Mr. Wizard. That's what all the kids in the neighborhood call him because he shows them the magic and mystery of science in everyday living. Oh, hi, Phil. Come on in. Oh, hi, Mr. Wizard. See that glass? Yeah. Well, come on over here. This is a... Uh, matchbox? An empty cover from a matchbox, you know. Playing card on the top. Golf ball. Pencil. You bring the pencil down here, flat, and give that thing a sharp blow right there, and watch what happens to the golf ball. Do it? Go ahead. Wow. To drop in. Yeah. Pretty nice trick. Yeah. You want to get the cover over there? Okay. Now. Why does that work that way? Well, I, we studied about something like this in school. I yeah, well, think I know what it is. What? Inertia. What's that? Well, it's uh, a force. And there are rules to it. Yeah. An object at rest tends to stay at rest unless influenced by an outside force. And, well, an object in motion tends to stay in motion unless interfered with... You, you know, you know who, who did all that? Sir Isaac Newton. Right, Sir Isaac Newton. Newton's laws of motion. And this is one of them, and that's what we're going to investigate today. But instead of just investigating, you know, the laws just like that, we're going to play tricks with them. And here's the first one. This, this reminds me of something I once saw. What? Where they um, pull a tablecloth away and all the dishes are still on the table. Oh, you mean like over here? Tablecloth, uh, dishes. All you'd have to do is take hold of the tablecloth and... Um, like that, you mean? Yes. All right, before you leave today, uh, I'll do it for you. In fact, not only will I do it, but I'll explain it, and maybe you can do it. Sure. Well, yeah, I respond. Remind me before you go. Yeah. Uh, but before we start on that difficult one, though, let's do a simple one like this one. Now, you do this at home. You don't have to have the top of a matchbox. You can use just a lightweight box of some kind. Uh, not lightweight, as you see in a minute, but for your purposes now. Uh, a card uh, is on the top because this box doesn't have a top on it, see? If you have an ordinary box, mm -hmm. you don't have to use the card. And then a ball that is fairly on the heavy side. Yes. Not really heavy, but heavy. We'll see why in a minute. Now I'll put it up here like this. And get it directly over the glass. And give it a nice, good, fast. Whack! Down. There's the word. Now that, that's, yeah, would you please? You said that that was inertia. Okay, would you now explain to me why it is that I can take this uh, piece of paper and glass stay there. Well, I know it's inertia. Um... Isn't this like the tablecloth? Yes. And the food? Thing, yeah. Only this is a little piece of tablecloth and only one, one uh, yeah. dish. Okay, you say that that's inertia, the fact that I can pull it out. Right. Okay, now then, would you please explain to me this? Now it's not coming out. Why not? Well, you're not pulling it fast. What's the, what's the speed got to do with it? Well... What? <laughs> it's, um... You, you have to pull it from underneath the... Um, well, this is heavier than the paper is. Oh? And, uh, I mean, yeah, the water is heavier. Yeah, the water is heavier than the paper. What's so that got to do with it? And when you pull it fast, the paper will stay there and the... The, I mean, the glass will stay there, and the paper Well, now, you remember away. when I told you about the, the ball and the glass and stuff, I said, for your purposes now, heavy, but it's not really heavy. That's not the important thing. Because what is, you say, heavy? Where does that word come from? What does that mean? What is the force that create, makes it heavy? Oh, uh, gravity. Gravity. Isn't gravity pulling it down? Yeah. Isn't it sitting on the table? Yeah. Isn't the table pushing back up again so that gravity is now counteracted? It is. Well, then what's gravity got to do with it? We're not pulling it down or up. We're pulling it sideways. Why does it work? Yes, why does it work? It's not gravity. It's not the weight of something. Yet you seem to be right, isn't it? That the heavier the thing is, uh, it stays there while the light thing goes. Well, in order to understand what it is that really makes this inertia effect, let's look at a special kind of inertia balance. There it is up there. See that? Uh, these are two hacksaw blades. See, and they're clamped down here with, on each side of this thing. And here's a little platform here with a hole in it. 
And when you pull it off to one side and let go... It really moves. Now, it moves because the hacksaw blades have a certain amount of elasticity, and here's a weight out here. Yeah, and they keep on going back and forth. Okay. Now, here's another weight with a string on it and the hole in here that I can put a nail through here so that I can support this weight like this. Now, would you please vibrate this again and notice the speed with which it goes, you know, how it's period of oscillation. I can't even count uh, You know, quite fast. Yeah. Now, if I add this weight on here, is it going to go the same speed, faster or slower? It should go slower, I think. There's more weight. Let me try. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Now, you said more weight. Why did you say weight? You're adding to it. Okay. The, the, the force of gravity it's pulling, pulling down, it down here. pulling down and is, adding more weight to this platform. However, now, if I have a string on here, you see, and if I take the string up here like this, I can hook it over that little thing like that, and now the, the, the weight that you, you said weight is still across to this, but it's now not supported there anymore. Look. Yeah, sure. The string is holding it up. The string is holding it up. So now we don't have the weight on this platform, do we? No. Okay. Now, let's do this again without this on here. Now, you vibrate it once. You hear that rhythm? Okay. Now, I'll attach this. Take that nail out, and you do it again. Same rhythm? Sounds pretty much the same to me. But now, it's not that it couldn't be the weight. Well, then, it, it, isn't, it isn't the weight. No. It's you know what it's called? Mass. It's this thing. Mass. It's the mass. Yeah. Now, what does that mean, mass? What's well, the... Um, Amount something has in it. Uh, you mean like seven? Well, we're mass. Well, no, I mean, it's a mount. That's <laughs> what it is. It's stuff. It's stuff, yeah. Yeah, okay. The, uh, in this case, it is not weight, but the, the volume of the stuff and the fact that it has... In fact, when scientists define weight, their kilogram, for example, thousand grams, is defined in terms of its inertia. Not its... Not its because it's, its weight, weight is only the gravitational force. Right. If you took this up into outer space, what would it weigh? Nothing. Would it still have the same mass? Sure. Would this still vibrate at the same rhythm? Yeah. But no so way. it has nothing to do so. with the weight. Oh, it, it, so it works the same way. Like the glass. glass. Yeah. Now, you see why I say it's not weight, but the mass. The mass. So the glass has more mass and the water than this. And when you do these tricks at home, try to get a ball that has Lots of mass. It work better. Yeah. And try to get the, the things between the ball and the glass with very little mass. So that will move, but the ball will not. And the, okay. and the same thing as the piece of paper. Now, when you, when you get practice, why does it move when you go slow? Well, we haven't overcome... The forces that yeah, are holding it there, down. There's friction between the bottom of the glass and the paper. Mm -hmm. And as long as you move slowly, you have not exerted enough force so that this inertia will overcome the friction, the friction. between the two. That's but when I'm you move it fast, the frictional forces inside the paper hold it together, but the, the force is not strong enough to overcome the friction, so it leaves so the glass it behind. So leaves the glass and pulls the paper. So the way to do this is to pull it slowly. And now you can get up considerable speed once you get going, and then... And it's if you practice, close. maybe you could even get it so it's like that. Well, dangerous, though. Well, at home, maybe you should practice with a uh, tin can full of uh, nails or pebbles or something, see? so in case it spills. You know, it's quite so dangerous. Quite so dangerous. Okay, now, what is it that makes these things work? Not weight. But mass. But mass. The mass has to do with the energy. And when we pull uh, the tablecloth out from underneath, it's going to be the same thing. Should be. But before we do that, maybe we better do some more practicing on various other kinds of energy. I hope so. I'm not quite ready to try Okay, that. here's a brick. And I have a piece of ordinary baker store string. Now, would you take the string and slowly raise the brick? Is the string strong enough to support it? Sure. Okay, it is. Now, hold the brick a couple of inches off the blanket down there. And now, move your hand up fast. Snapped. You mean the brick now weighs more? Well, the weight doesn't change. What does? It, well, it must work somewhat the same as you say the paper when you pulled it slowly. Yes. Um, it didn't change. But 
When, when it went fast, it did. Uh, then the well, inertia now, was pushing against it, and it was... In one case, we have just the force of gravity when we pick it up slowly. Very little inertia, right? Mm -hmm. But now when you move fast, you, you combine the force of gravity pulling down and inertia at the same time as pulling in the same direction. The That's force right, because it's coming against it. So this is why you can now... Well, does it, does it really become heavier for a second there, no, or is not, it just the No, no, not heavy. Methods? Heavy means gravity. I mean... It has the mass doesn't become No, higher. but it has inertia, and that's why scientists decide, define it this way. It is a force, you know, that, he, that, that helps break the... Okay, now try it again. Slowly. Slowly. Ah, now wait. You didn't move fast enough. Wait. Get it up here. Make sure it stopped. Oh, maybe that's... Right. Now, there. Oh, and then when I pull up, the inertia becomes... Bigger. Now, why? We didn't... We, I, I was going to mention it over there, but I, I forgot it. Why? Where does this inertia come from, this force? It's, it's there. Well, most of the time you study about it in school, yet you never really, you know, think of where does it come from. See if this makes sense. Scientists think that perhaps this, this might be the answer. On this brick at the time when you pull it up, if you pull it up slowly, the force of the string is pulling up, gravity is pulling it down. Does the moon affect this brick? Yeah, well, I, I know it affects the tides, mm -hmm. high tide, low tide. Yeah. So it's probably affecting this brick. How about yeah. the sun? What? The sun affects the whole planet. Yeah, on all the things on it. Yeah. Of course it is. How about stars? Do they affect it? I don't know. Well, Newton, way back when he, he, he formulated these laws, realized that there was a gravitational force between all the things in the universe. One planet to the next planet, you know, and one planet to the sun, and all the stars. It makes sense. So now assume, let us say, that we have forgotten gravity for a minute, pulling down. But all the rest of the forces around the universe, all the rest of the bodies in the universe, all around it, are all affecting this brick. Trying to pull it this way, this way, this way, this way, and they all are equal. Well, then, it would just, you could let go of it, it would just stay there. What about it? in outer space? It does. That's you exactly what happens, isn't it? Now, if you give it a little push, it you've suddenly given it a little extra force in this direction, so, so it, it would continue overcomes to move. These, it? When you now give it a big, fast, quick push, you suddenly overcome the forces that are pushing in this direction for that instant, yeah. so you get it so that it would, it would tend to move. Like anyway, this is one of the explanations that scientists feel that perhaps this may be an explanation. Well, for how this. come it won't work here? What do you mean? Well, we have gravity, our big problem. Oh, that's right. It's much closer, though. Right. Because the Earth is so close, you forget about those other forces that well, are so if, small. If, if we could to. kind of get right in the middle of everything, then. Which is kind of the, perhaps where our galaxy is. Yeah. That's what maybe keeps it where it is. Okay, how about, uh, oh, let's do another version of this. Have you ever noticed people in the um, store? Here's a paper bag. Would you fill up full of bricks? Sure. Well, or at least put these three in. Going shopping. Yeah, now instead of, uh, instead of uh, using the string this time, let's use the paper bag. Just grab a hold of the side of it here and pull up slowly. Slowly. Okay, no problem. I'll put it down and now use the force of inertia. Pick it up quickly. Rip. Try the other side. There. Rip. Now, you notice the difference? In fact, this happens to, to women sometimes when they go shopping at the supermarket. They get a big bag full of groceries, full of cans and things. And if you try to pick it up from the top and do it too quickly... All over the floor. All over the floor. So the answer is to, if you are going to pick it up by the top, pick it up slowly. Now, these, this force of inertia was pulling down in this direction. Let's do the same thing, uh, but support it down a different way, over here with a couple more bricks. See this little platform? Yes. Roller skate. Brick. Another brick. What are you building? Well, this now has inertia, doesn't it? This mass that I put up here. Whoa! Oh. See what happened? The, the wheel hit the, uh, the edge here, yes. and we destroyed our... Uh, our low friction. But how come it, like, we were just doing it now, and it didn't go off the edge? Yeah, it doesn't move. Why? How much friction is there in the roller skate wheels? Very little. In fact, that one didn't even touch it. Yeah. 
so that the mass, this mass now, because of its inertia, will stay there while we push the thing underneath, just as though I were holding it. Oh, so this really is moving. It's just the, the ground the, is moving. The really ground is moving. moving. In fact, this, is, this, is, this might perhaps help you understand a seismograph. You know what that is? Scientists use that to measure earthquakes, don't right. they? To measure the movements of the earth, a tremor of some kind, either from uh, you know, slippage or a volcano exploding someplace or perhaps an atomic bomb or something like this. Well, imagine that this is the earth down here. Then if you suspend a large weight so that its gravitational forces are counteracted, and you now put a pointer on here, and now coming up from the earth, you now put a piece of paper with you know, smoke on it or something. Now, if the earth moves, what would happen to the pointer? Well, the pointer would stay still, but the paper you put on the earth would move. Would and move. Get, uh, so that's where the jagged right, lines are. Right, that's where the jagged lines are. Kind of See, there's an earthquake, and, and we could record it right here. So is this how it works? That's, how, that's the principle behind it. Mm -hmm. Now, have you ever driven a car? You're too young to drive, but have you ever uh, practiced it or anything? Well, up in the country sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, old roads and things. Yeah. Well, let's, let's you try. Well, let's see. Oh, good. Because I wanted to know if, if, how fast did you go? I don't know. 20, 30 miles an hour? 35, 39. Um, when you got in the car, when your father got out and went around, he sat in that seat, and you sat there in the driver's seat, did he tell you to, okay, get going 35 miles an hour, and what you you put your foot on the gas, and zing, all of a sudden you were going 35? No. I why not? went slowly. Yeah, Why? Well, what's the point of, if you're I, going to go 35, why not go 35? I couldn't if I wanted to. You, you can't just get in the car and go 0, 35. Why not? Inertia. Inertia, <laughs> that's right. In fact, we can use this roller skate as a car and see why it is that you have to start up slowly. And we can kind of uh, make a measurement of the effective force of the inertia. Let's assume that this roller skate is a car and that this rubber band here is the motor, the engine. See, you know, I have a little uh, hook there that we can hook on the engine. So you could, by how far you stretch it, why this is uh, going to be a measurement of starting friction and inertia. So we, will, we can't assume that it is all inertia. I'll put the brick on here to give it some mass, and I'll put a pencil right here by the front wheels. Now you stretch the rubber band so it's just barely tight, and now slowly pull the rubber band and, m and we'll put a second pencil here at the point where the cart begins to move. Right there. Right about there. I'll try it once again to make sure that that's not an accident because if there's a little piece of sand or something down here, you know, it would throw all our readings off. So, someplace, Just a little someplace bit before. Actually, okay. almost the same. Now this, this is like a car. If you want to start the car up, you'd have to have that much force on it before the car even moves to overcome inertia. Yeah, so right away, so you can't go, just zoom. Right, you can't. Now, let's make this car into a truck. Is it going to be more force to get it started? Or sure. Okay, here's another... Uh, more mass. More mass. Wait, right. mass. More mass. Go ahead, try it once and see if it takes... Oh, right in there? there? Let's try it again. A little, a little more. A little more, yeah. Okay. So now, is this true? Is this what happens with the truck? Does it take more force to get the truck going? Sure. I mean, if you're in back of a truck, it's stuck. By the time it gets going, right. it's, it's I just turn long, red again. Yeah, long, long time. Especially if it's full of sand or, or rocks or things. And how about a train? Even slower. When they pull out of the station, very, yeah, very, very slow. It's a long while before they get going. Right. To because they have a tremendous mass to, to get moving. Okay, well, now that's why you can't step on the gas and suddenly go 35. If you do sometimes, the wheels spin around, don't they? That's right. You just don't move. You just stay in one place. Because of the great mass of the thing. Okay. Well, now, all of the forces that we've, uh, or all the inertial effects and tricks that we've done so far, have mostly been with things that were at rest. And Newton said that they would tend to stay at rest. Now, what was the second part? Oh, an object in motion would tend to stay in motion. Okay, well, now let's try doing some uh, experiments with that. The simplest one is this. Ball, steel ball, so it has plenty of mass, you could use a golf ball too, and a box with one end cut out. If I put it here and get the box moving, I'll overcome the inertia of the ball and get it to move with the box. Then I'll simply stop. 
an object in motion yeah, tends, tends to, to stay, stay in motion. motion. So the ball continues. Isn't that another force, though? <laughs> my yeah. hand. Your hand. So this now is an example of force continuing, uh, or the mass continuing because of its... I'm not pushing it, see? I simply stop. Sure. Well, this, this happens um, in a car even. Sometimes. That's right, it does. It will, in fact, uh, let's see what happens in a car. Car. Brick wall. French viewers? Well, little play figures to kind of show you what can happen. This is one of those uh, cars, you know, that... Uh, inertial cars, as a matter of oh, fact, yeah. they call it. Inside there's a, a little sort of a heavy weight, and once you get it moving, why the car continues to spin. So ordinarily, if you were driving along in the car and you wanted to stop, you'd put on the brakes put and gradually brakes. come to a stop. Okay, this time, get it going and let it hit the brick wall at high speed. You see what happens. Right through the happens? windshield. Yes, yeah, right through the windshield. It's kind of uh, horrifying, isn't it? Yeah, well, yeah. That, that's unfortunately what happens, though. Yes. Now, why? Well, both the car and the people were moving along. Right, like the ball in the box. Yeah, and um, all of a sudden the car stopped, but they kept on going. Right, just like the ball. They kept yeah. right on going. In fact, they could, you know, fly right through the windshield and all the rest of it. So now, faster. what do you do about this? You stop them. Well, in other words, the first thing you do is you don't try to hit any brick walls. You slow yeah, down, you, you graduate, and you do it slowly so that you will stop with the car. Okay, then, for emergency purposes, what do you do? Seat belts. Oh, and that would hold you in, so when you came to a crash, you like held back. In fact, many, many people are injured by just moving forward and hitting their head on the windshield. And the seat belt, yeah. of course, prevents uh, this from happening because you stop with the car when you have a seat belt mm -hmm. on. So that's a good example of inertia, unfortunately, <laughs> because yeah. it can be very dangerous. And you find it other places. Have you ever noticed that when the car goes around a corner, you move over to one side of the car? Yeah, it you... always happens at a big turn or something. You know, you're always leaning. In the well, you, te you tend to go in the same direction as you were, and the car is moving, so that means that you have to move so in. If the car was turning like this, you'd be going. Like well, you lean like that to counteract the force that is tending to keep yeah. you going in the same direction. In fact, this... This aspect of inertia is so much a part of your everyday life and your experience that you never really stop to think about it. Maybe I can make you think about it up here with a ball. See this? Here's some steel balls down here like this. Yeah. And this is in an incline so that when you put them up here between these two strips to get the ball started... Roll down to the bottom. Yeah. Now, what are the forces that are acting on this ball? Why does it continue to go like this? Oh, well, it's inertia. Once, once it's overcome... It's, uh, well, this is gravity, basic. first of all. Yes. Gravity. It's pulling it down because right. it's on an But gravity is pulling it down this way. Yeah. And the force of this thing, because I have it built up this way, is now making it go in that direction. Okay, now... What happened? What do you mean, what happened? I rolled the ball down the incline. Yeah, but you were rolling it down before. So I went to one side. That's inertia. No. Huh? No, you're putting a. I don't, I don't, twist I don't on the understand ball, what's the matter with you. You're going along perfectly fine here. What's the matter with you? Hmm? Would you like to try it? Go ahead, try it. What was doing perfectly that? Perfectly all right to me. I don't see what you're so. That you just made it go what? to my side. What? Look, it it was here. Well, there evidently is some, another force or something is going on. Why? Why are you so amazed? What, what's the matter? Well, because what, normally it would go yeah. down what a happened? straight line. And then what happened? And then it came halfway down, and then it... And moved over like went that? Went over to one side. You mean like that? No, it went to the other side. You mean it makes a little curve in there? Yeah. And you don't think that that's right? Well, you must. it must be some kind of a twist or something in the tape or something that's making it... In other words... You are so accustomed to having things continue in a straight line that when they move off of the straight line, you know something's wrong, something's wrong because you know that inertia forces say that it's supposed to go on. Well, what do you suspect it is? What is that ball made of? Steel. Steel. Besides gravitational forces and inertia, what other kind of forces could make that ball move? Oh, a magnet. A magnet. Huh? Oh. 
Think you're pretty smart, eh? Foot switch. No wonder I couldn't see what was going on. Here, you uh, work the foot switch. Now turn it on. You now turn it off. You get the idea? Yeah, I think I do. So every time that I rolled it down, you took your foot off. Every right. time that you rolled it. And of course, it was turned around here like this so that as it as it went by here, it affected the ball as it went down. Mm -hmm. Okay, well now, you see how much you take this uh, inertia for granted. You think you now have had enough experience with inertia to pull the tablecloth out from under the food? Hope so. All right, let's try it. I don't know. See, here is a pitcher of water, a glass of water, an apple, uh, salt, pepper, uh, bacon and eggs, plate, knife and fork. And according to the glass of water and the uh, piece of paper over there, all we have to do is give it a good old... Jerk fast. Sure it's going to work? Well, I don't know. One, it shouldn't work. There's only one way to find out, and that's to give it a good pull. You ready? Ready. All um... right. <laughs> it worked. Okay, now you want to try it? Okay. Well, now, here's what, if you want to try this at home, and it's a good trick, a very famous trick, which many people try to do in a, in a, you know, they don't work too well. You must have a special kind of tablecloth that is kind of like the paper, very smooth, so that you have very little friction between this and these items. Then make sure that it does not have a hem in it. Because you can see, with the, with the cloth moving along, what happens when the hem comes along? Oh, It'll well. Tip, yeah, tip things over. So then also be, be sure and try to do this on a relatively smooth table so that you keep the frictional forces between the tablecloth and the uh, table as small as possible. And the stuff that you set on the table is it should be, should they be heavy, quote, unquote, or should they be light, quote, unquote? Heavy, quote, unquote. Uh, what do you mean by, quote, unquote? Should have mass, right? Should have the mass. Okay, you get around over here. And when you pull, pull in the same plane. Don't pull up, don't pull down. Pull. You sure way. you want me to do this? Well, you might as well. Okay. Well, can I move? A few now, dishes. get your hand out here as far as... Because uh, so, all you have to do is move the cloth this much. Are you sure this will work? I don't know. We'll try. It worked for me. So get up here like this and pull, but don't try to move your feet. Okay, here we go. Take it. Fast. It worked. Congratulations. <laughs> wow. Can I try it again? Mm -hmm. Mr. Wizard is presented each week at this time by the Public Affairs Department of the NBC Television Network in cooperation with New York University.